Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program. This time we are in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and I have here the Monument Rocket which you may have seen launching the Saturn V to orbit. The entire Saturn V fully fueled. Uh, you can see that our mass pad is 52,000 tons. I hope you didn't think that I was going to use this rocket as a one-off gimmick or something and not subsequently use it for greater things. I indeed will. And this is sort of a test to launch Skylab to Jupiter, into Jupiter orbit, mind you. And yeah, I did this during a live stream. That's actually a part of the test. I wanted to see whether it was even possible to launch this thing during a live stream uh, because of the sheer strain on my computer and the sheer horror of the frame rates, much lower than I got while trying to record it on my own. Streaming obviously takes up extra resources, and I'm recording at the same time too, so that doesn't help anything. But yeah, an essential test for the future of this uh, gigantic rocket, and what it may do for us. The overall launch took about 40 minutes. Here I've uh, sped up the video by a factor of 4. This is 4 times the actual speed right here. Yeah. Uh, the original video, the, this portion, uh, when we got to the end part where I sped it up to real time, uh, this part was sped up by a factor of 8. So, I guess you can compare like that? Anyway, but yeah, slowly rising. I turned down the particles temporarily while the smoke was down there, but then increased the particle count so we still got a nice plume. It didn't really have that much of a frame rate impact, to be honest. Uh, smoke screen is doing a fairly good job these days. Look at that gimbal. Remember, the center engines are uh, gimbal-less, and only the outer ones actually gimbal. Uh, if you didn't watch the previous video, the boosters have four RD-270s on them each. They're burning UDMH and NTO, and the core engines are M1 engines, and they're hydrolox, hydrogen and oxygen. And I don't even remember how many of them are there. A lot. A lot of M1s there. There's 13 M1s on the second stage. So, yeah. You might have seen my cursor pointing at the top of the rocket. I was pointing at the stage that's the same diameter as the Saturn V. Uh, it's really hard to get a sense of how big this thing is. For instance, I noted during the live stream that after about 17 to 18 seconds, it had used up as much fuel as the full mass of the Saturn V. So, yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, shooting that stuff out at a prodigious rate. You can see here at about 20 kilometers that the sea level engines, the RD-270s, have their uh, plume flared out, but the M1s, which are more vacuum optimized, still have tighter plumes. But by the time we get to about 30 kilometers, all the plumes have flared out now. Again, still, the video is sped up by a factor of four here. booster set. The booster somehow went higher on the first stage than before, I don't know why, but there they go, the raised asterisk, as I dubbed it last time. Incidentally, this rocket is so tall that even with hangar extender, I couldn't set the bottom of the rocket on the floor of the VAB and still get to the top of it with the payload, so I had to scooch it all down. Maybe that's why the boosters rode up the first stage, I don't know, I don't know why, but basically it was clipped into the floor of the VAB when I pressed launch, which generally you don't want to do, but it worked out. But I'm gonna have to tweak hangar extender somehow to allow for this rocket to carry payloads like this in the future. I expect this might not be the tallest payload I ever have to carry. It is nice not to have the huge fairings. Of course, we have fairly heavy inner stages. I'm still pointing at the Saturn S2 stage, reminding people that that's the diameter of the Saturn V right there. Um, yep. This stage right here uh, is the final stage of the Monument rocket itself. The next stage will actually get it to orbit and then also begin the push to Jupiter. And then the following stage is supposed to complete the Trans-Jupiter injection. But as it turned out, I needed a stage after that to finish the Trans-Jupiter injection. Anyway, uh, we are currently looking at it as it was streamed. This is not sped up at all. I stopped speeding it up after the first stage core was disposed of. So again, there's 13 M1 engines that are powering this, and they are done. 
and separation and ignition of one of the M1s on this stage. And reason being that I didn't notice that they actually had two ignitions. So I thought they were one ignition each, so I just wanted to ignite the center one and then use the outer three for the Trans Jupiter injection. So, but as it turns out, they have two ignitions, so I'll relight the center one later on anyway. But here it is, reaching orbit. You can see it's on orbit mass as we complete this burn. More than 3,000 tons there. We'll see how much we ultimately fling towards Jupiter. Here's the plot. And we'll take about 7,000 meters per second to get there, which is higher than normal, but not a big problem. And uh, here I light the center engine first, and that gave me the ability to time the burn a little bit better. You can see how far away the maneuver node is from the prograde vector, so it's not a great time to ignite. But uh, we have little RCS thrusters on here, and I accidentally ignited all the ullage motors already. I've misstaged those. They that were like on the booster separation stage, which had a whole lot of SRBs, so it was a little bit hard to tell. So I didn't actually have ullage motors, but it turned out the, the RCS thrusters that I put on here were good enough, which was quite a surprise to me because I've never tried to turn something this big with RCS thrusters. And the biggest RCS thrusters I had were only like 550 newtons, so less than the stock ones. I put a fair number of them, but I didn't know how many I would need. Anyway, off goes that stage, and now we have a, the S2 stage from the Saturn V. Five J2S engines. I changed the configuration to the S. And I tried to decouple one of these fairings, but I neglected the fact that with Raider Nix fairings, it has a little engine on it. It's, if you saw, it said activate engine, and you have to do both at the same time. So it did not separate properly, and we nearly had a catastrophe. Thankfully, we did not and things worked out during this stage and here we have the proton first stage we needed a stage with storable fuels right because the fuels we don't want boiling off on the way to jupiter this stage is supposed to get us into orbit around jupiter so the biggest stage with storable fuels that i know of is the proton first stage i think i don't remember any other real stage that has a larger UDMH N2O or something like that uh, fuel quantity and so I went with this but the engines only have one ignition each so I only ignited one pair for completing this burn and then we'll ignite another pair to get into orbit around Jupiter and then we'll have one more ignition with the last pair to make a correction and I was hoping to hit Europa with it but that didn't work out spoilers anyway departing Earth with Skylab this is Raider Nix Skylab, incidentally, and has all the business, but it doesn't actually have an antenna that can communicate with Earth from Jupiter. Of course, it can communicate with Earth from low Earth orbit, but I turned off communications because of that, and I also time warped in the tracking station because its solar panels can't power it all the way out to Jupiter. You can see it's got a bit of a power draw, so I cheated in that respect. Uh, we would need probably a nuclear reactor to power this. I don't think we would put large enough solar panels to power Skylab. It's got quite a few solar panels already. Anyway, we have ignited the Proton first stage once again with two of the engines in order to get into orbit around Jupiter at a pretty, pretty fair distance, but we didn't have a whole lot of choice. Uh, the RCS thrusters were not good enough to like manage our approach or do a mid-course adjustment. It would take forever to do that, like, well, 10 minutes or something like that. And I would face that again when we fail to hit Europa here. I'm plotting for Europa, but because of the engine ignition time and it being just a little bit off, we ended up not managing this particular rendezvous with the final burn here. And I did check whether I could RCS it, but it turned out that that was not feasible. Again, it's during a live stream. I didn't want to put everybody through hell. If I had no, if, uh, if I was doing it on my own and I had a book to read, I wouldn't have minded. So anyway, Skylab around Jupiter. Our throw weight to Jupiter was 387 tons. So that's before getting into orbit. And I think that gives me ideas. Many ideas. There are many possibilities if you can throw this kind of weight to Jupiter. I'm sure you can imagine some of them. But anyway, I'll leave it here. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.